God. Good afternoon and welcome to English Listens on Iman TV. In today's lessons, we have three parts. First, we're going to study a grammar lesson. It's on prison progressive or prison continuous tense. I will give you all the rules and examples. <clears throat> the second part is the reading comprehension. We're going to read a very simple dialogue to model it in order to answer some basic questions about yourself. And the third part is the listening comprehension that I will read a simple dialogue or conversation to you and then you will listen to me and answer questions about it. At the meantime, for each of these segments, you'll also learn some new words. So let's start our listen with the, <clears throat> the prison progressive tense. The, we studied, remember we studied simple prison tense, that we use the tense in order to talk about something that we do again and again and again. This one, the prison progressive tense, we use this, ten, this tense to talk about what we do right now at this moment of speaking. For example, at this moment, I am talking and you are listening. So how are we making this tense? How can we make this tense? What are the rules for this? I'm going to explain that to you in the next slide. <clears throat> the way you make it in English is that, you also, of course, you have to have a subject. But before the verb, you have to use a form of a P, which is is, am, are, plus verb, and then plus ing. <clears throat> the form of B, is, am, are, depends on the subject. Whatever, whatever your subject is, you have to match it with the subject. Like you say, I am, you are, she is. And then the verb, and then look here, the ing. Like you could say what? <clears throat> you could say, you are watching TV now. But you have to say you are watching. That ing at the end of the verb is required if you want to say something that's happening right now. You're watching TV now. So a form of B, because it is you, plural, you use what? Are. You are, and then the verb, ing. If you say you are, you are watched, that's not correct English, okay? You say what? You are watching TV now. But you cannot say you're watching TV every day. English, the time and the form of the verb, there's direct relationship. If you change the time, you change the form of the verb. Uh, so that's why we have to pay attention. So here are some more examples. <coughs> For example, for I, you say what? I am watching Iman TV now. If you're watching, this is the correct sentence about you. You are watching Iman TV now. He is watching Iman TV now. She is watching Iman TV now. And then they are watching Iman TV now. We are watching I Iman TV now. And you are watching Iman TV now. In children, if you use a noun, then you say what? Are. The children are watching Iman TV now. I certainly hope that this is the case. Uh, so again, the way that you make it, your subject, a form of B, and that is is, M, R, plus verb, I, N, G, C, is complement or object. So rule number one, add I, N, G to most verbs to make the present progressive form. For example, you say park, parking. You say what? I am parking my car now. Or read, reading. I am reading a book now or a story now. So with the verb, you just add ing and of course you have to have the to be verb. When a verb ends with e, delete e and then add ing. For example, drive. So when you say drive, when you write drive in the prison form, you add an e there. But when you add ing, you have to delete the e and add ing. You say what? Driving. See, the e is not there. If you put e in ing, it's wrong. It's not correct spelling. So it's a spelling rule. So knowing this rule will help you learn the correct spelling. Take. 
taking. See? E disappears. Bake. Baking. When you add the ing, there is no E. So that's rule number two. Rule number three is this. When there is a vowel, and what are the vowel letters? In English, A, E, I, O, U. These five letters are called vowel letters. So if you have a vowel letter between two consonant letters, so in other words, if you have a consonant, vowel, consonant, we call it C, V, C. When you add the I in G, you have to double the final consonant. Okay? So you say, for example, sit, sitting. You have to have double T. Why? Because there is an I, which is what? A vowel between two consonants. S is a consonant, T is a consonant, I is in between, so that's why you have to make it double T. Sitting. The same thing, shut, shutting. Although there are two letters, S and H, but S, H makes one single sound, the sh sound. Okay? So that's why it's considered one sound, not two letters. And then what do you have? U, a vowel, and then T, a consonant. You make it what? Shutting, double T. And then cut. So uh, uh, C, U, T, and the U is what? A vowel, so it's C, V, C. So you put double T, cutting. It's a very important rule, and please follow it. The only time you don't double the final consonant, I'll add that next week, is if the, the consonant is W or X, you don't double it. Like you say fix, you don't say fixing with double X. Or mow, you don't say mowing, doubling it. Other than that, this is the rule, okay? That if there is a vowel between two consonants, when you add the ing, make the double the final consonant. <clears throat> rule number four, that is, verbs end, the verbs that they end with ie, when you add ing, change ie to y. For example, you say lie, lying. So you say, he lies every day. He is lying now. So with lying, you have to make it what? L-Y-I-N-G. And die. So you say what? Dying. He is dying now. See? Dying becomes what? D-Y-I-N-G. I-E changes to Y when, uh, when you add I-N-G. Keep those rules in mind. Now let's practice this. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to give you sentences with blank spaces. And I want you to consider those rules. First, you have to have a form of B in front of the verb, and then you add ing. And then those four rules that you drop what? The final E before you add ing. You double the final consonant if there is what? Uh, C, V, C. And then what? I, E is changed to Y. So here are some sentences. We watch Iman TV now. So what form of watch can you say? So if you say we watch Iman TV now is not correct. People understand you, but it's not correct English. Because when you say now, you have to change the form of the verb. If you say every day, you could say yes, we watch Iman TV every day. There is nothing wrong with that. But when you change the time to now, you have to change the form of the verb. Okay? So the correct answer will be what? We are watching Iman TV now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you some sentences. I want to consider those rules and change it to the present progressive tense. The children play soccer now. How can you change this one? Look at it very carefully. Number two, number three actually. My mom practices her English now. How can you add ing to this to make it for now? Our teacher talk to us now. Number five, I cook now. And number six, Bob read a magazine now. So these are the sentences. I want you to change them to prison progressive tense. Okay? So let's do it together. And when you change it, read it loud enough that you can hear what you're saying. 
So sentence number one was already done, I showed you. But number two, the children play soccer now. So what is, your, what is the correct answer? Please read your answer loud enough that you can hear it yourself. The your correct answer should be what? The correct answer should be the children are playing soccer now. So you need to do two things. First, use the form of be. But because we talk about children, it's more than one. One child, two children. So it's probably for soccer, you need 11 children or more. They are playing. And then you have to put the ing in now. Sentence number three. <clears throat> My mom practice her English now. So how do you change this one? Again, you talk about now. But also, I want you to look at the spelling of the word to see when you add the ing, what else do you need to do? So here, practice. Look at the word. Practice. P-R-A-C-T-I-C-E. What was the rule for adding ing when a word ends with e? The rule was what? The rule was to delete the e and add ing. This is how you do it. So you say that what? My mom is practicing her English now. See, you add ing, but e is not there because that was the rule. Sentence number four. If it goes to number four, it should. Our teacher talked to us now. So again, you, our teacher is what? How many people are we talking about? One person or more than one person? Our teacher is what? Singular. So you have to say what? Our teacher is talking to us now. Sentence number five. I cook now. So you change it to what? I am cooking now. See? Consistently. You have to use what? A form of B. Our teacher is talking to us now. I am cooking now. So you put the ing there. In sentence number six, Bob read a magazine now. So you say what? Bob is singular. And then you talk about now. You have to say what? Bob is reading a magazine now. Okay? So let me read these correct sentences in the present progressive tense. Our teacher is talking to us now. I am cooking now. Bob is reading a magazine now. Number seven. The butcher cut the meat now. What is the meaning of butcher? Do you know what a butcher is? A butcher is a person who slaughters animals and cut meat. Uh, so you get the sh a sheep or a cow, the, the butcher basically kills it and then cuts it into pieces. That person is called what? A butcher. In Farsi you call it qasab. So this is, we're talking about a qasab or a butcher. Uh, so you pronounce it B-U, spell is B-U-T. T is silent, okay? You say butcher. Please say it after me. Butcher. Uh, the butcher uh, cut the meat now. So here, you change it to what? The butcher is cutting the meat now. And look at this, cutting is what? Double T. Why? Because you have consonant, vowel, consonant. If there is a vowel between two consonants, the rule was what? You double the final consonant. Sentence number eight. Who is the window now? Who is the window now? The correct answer is what? I want you to say it. Who is closing the window now? That's how you see it. But when you write it, you need to say what? Who is closing? See, this E disappears. You have to delete the E when you add ING. This is a very set rule. You can't change it. Please learn it and please practice it when you write. And when you say it, of course, you don't have to worry about it. Sentence number nine. Bob die of lung cancer now. See, die. So you change it to what? 
Bob is dying of lung cancer now. But look at the spelling. It changes so very uniquely. See? D-I-E. I-E is what? The two vowel sounds. When you add I-N-G, you cannot add I-N-G after E. You have to say what? Dying. So I-E changes to Y. Bob is dying of cancer now. So when you say it, it's not an issue. You just say dying. But when you write it, it is an issue because if you say D-I-E-I-N-G, that's not English. That's not correct. So the correct pronunciation is what? Dying. D, I mean spelling. D-Y-I-N-G. Let me read these correct sentences, the correct form of the present progressive tense, and then we'll go to the next page. The butcher is cutting the meat now. Who's, cu who's closing the window now? There should be a question mark. I didn't put it. Bob is dying of lung cancer now. At this part, I'm going to sh show you some actions, okay? Some pictures that freezes, that shows an action. I want you to think of an English word that is the meaning of that frozen action and tell me what is happening. Like, look at this picture. What is he doing now? So you, you need to come up with, so you, you have two jobs. Number one, you need to find the right word. And number two, when you add ing, what do you change in that word? Okay, so here, so look at that picture. He's on the mountain, it's a lot of snow, and he is doing what? The correct answer is, actually we have the same word in Farsi, okay? We say what? Ski, but this in English says skiing now. So, he's skiing now. In ski, ends with I, you add I-N-G, you don't change anything. So, there's double I there, okay? One I from the word, the other I that you add the I-N-G. So, he's skiing now. Now, let me show you another picture. Look at this picture. What is she doing now? Look at her. She's doing what? What is she doing now? What is the word for that? The word for that in English is praying. She's praying now. Again, when a word ends with Y, you only add ING. You don't have to make any other adjustment. You don't have to change anything. What is she doing now? She's praying now. Let me read these two sentences for you. Then you'll go to the next page. What is he doing now? He's skiing now. What is she doing now? She's praying now. Sentence number three. What is he doing now? Look there. There is fire and he's trying to what? Basically kill the fire, put out the fire. What is one word for that? When there is a fire, you want to kind of uh, pour water on it uh, uh, and kill it and put it out. What is that word? We studied that word a couple of weeks ago. The correct answer is, is extinguishing the, the, a fire now. Is extinguishing. See, extinguish is what? To put out the fire. So when you make it ing, you say what? E is extinguishing ing. He is extinguishing a fire now. Please repeat after me. Extinguish. Extinguishing. He is extinguishing a fire now. Let's look at the next picture. What is he doing now? Here is the picture. What do you see? He is doing what? He is? Yes. He is painting a wall now. So paint, painting. Here, you just add ing, you don't change anything. He is painting a wall now. So, a person who paints is called what? Painter. So, he's a painter and he's painting a wall. Let me read these sentences for you. What is he doing now? Sentence number three. He's extinguishing a fire now. Sentence number four. What is he doing now? He's painting a wall now. I have two more pictures for you. What is he doing now? Look at the picture. There is somebody, you don't see the face, but uh, somebody has a knife and he cuts the, 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 the cake into pieces. What do you call that? When you take a piece of bread or cake and you cut it into pieces. What do you call that? He is? Yes. 
The correct answer is he is slicing a cake now. Slice is a noun and slice is a verb. It means you cut it into small pieces. He is slicing a cake now. So slicing. But look, remember, slice, it's is L I C E. When you add I N G, you drop the final E. So you say he is slicing a cake now. Please repeat. He is slicing a cake now. Last picture I have for you, number six, is this. What is he doing now? You see the man who is what? Working on a car. So he is fixing a car now. And again, this was an exception here that would fix. We have consonant, vowel, consonant. But we don't want to, we don't make it double X. If so, if a word ends with X, that the rule of C, V, C, consonant, vowel, consonant doesn't apply. He is fixing a car now. Okay, now let me read these sentences for you. What is he doing now? Sentence number five. He's slicing a cake now. Number six. What is he doing now? He's fixing a a car now now reading a simple and basic conversation as i mentioned at the beginning of the lesson what i have for you is a very basic conversation between two people but they it's this is the kind of conversation that when you go to the hospital when you go to the post office when you talk to your neighbor they ask you these questions you basically provide information about yourself so i'm going to show you this we're going to read it together. So it's not listening, it's reading. We're going to read it together and see if you can provide this kind of information about yourself. Here's the conversation. The conversation is between Anne and Bob. So Anne asks Bob, what is your name? So you, if you don't know a person, you ask him what? What is your name? And Bob says what? My name is Bob. What is your address? And asks. So address? My address is 2251 A Street, Fremont, California. See, look how you mention your address. You have to give what? The number of the street, then the name of the street, then the name of the city, and then the state. So that's how it works. The number, the name of the street, the city, and then the state. And remember, when you write it, you say 2251 A Street. If you write it on one line, you have to put the comma after A Street, then Fremont, comma, California, comma. What's your phone number? My phone number is 510-225-2145. That's what Bob says. Where are you from? I'm from Boston. Okay. So now, let me read this again for you, and then you'll, you'll answer questions about it. What's your name? My name is Bob. What is your address? My address is 2251 A Street, Fremont, California. What's your phone number? My phone number is 510-225-2145. Where are you from? I'm from Boston. Now let's see if you can answer these questions about this conversation that you just read together. Where is Bob from? Do you remember? What city does he live in now? What state does he live in now? Okay. So one thing is that he came from somewhere else, but currently he lives in a different place. So where is Bob from? Uh, uh, Bob is from Boston. He's from Boston. What city does he live in? Bob lives in Fremont. So he lives in Fremont. What state does he live in? He lives in California. So remember, when you write your address, you remember, put the number, then the name of the street, then the name of the city, then the name of what? The state. So those four things. Bob is from Boston, Bob lives in Fremont, and Bob lives in California. 
Now, please answer these questions about yourself. So if, if you talk to somebody who doesn't know you, a new neighbor, you go to a hospital, you go to a post office, you go to a place, they ask you these questions. So I want you to have enough practice to say it correctly. What is your name? You say, my name is, and then you say your name. First name first, and then last name. Or you just say what? Without a complete sentence, somebody says, what is your name? Just give your name. First name, last name. What is your address? So here is that's why I want you to practice, those of you who don't know, that you give the number first, and then what? The name of the street, and then the name of the city, and then the name of the state. So my address is blank. So I want you to answer these questions about yourself. What is your name? Fill in the blank. My name is? What is your address? Fill in the blank. My address is? And then, more questions. What's your phone number? My phone number is, first you get the area code, and then the number. So, uh, and where are you from? I'm from the name of the country, we all come, most of us come from Afghanistan, you say what, well, I'm from Afghanistan, or I'm from Pakistan, or I'm from India, whatever country you come from. Um, so let's give you some examples and practice it. What is your name? So if somebody asks me, what is your name, I would say what? My name is Sadiq Popal. So of course in English I would say Sadiq Popal because there is no ka sound, uh, so in Farsi it will be Sadiq Popal. What's your address? So, this is not my real address, just for practice. It's 1521 David Avenue, Fremont, California. So see, the number of the street, the name of the street, and then the city, and then the state. 1521 David Avenue, Fremont, California. What's your name? What's your address? What is your phone number? My phone number is 925-768-4885. This is correct information. So this is my cell phone number. So if you have questions about my lessons or you have suggestions, you want to talk to me and say, Dr. Popal, could you please change this or could you please speak slowly or could you do this or that, call me this number. I'll be glad to talk to you. If I'm not there, I'm in a class, leave a message and I'll call you back. My phone number is 925, the area code, 768-4885. Where are you from? Then you say what? In this, my case, I'm from Afghanistan. I'm an Afghan. So the country will be, I'm from Afghanistan. People usually, and so when you talk to your neighbor, this is a question you don't ask Americans, okay? Most people from Europe and America, they don't want, they don't want people to know how old they are. This is a no-no question. But if you go to the hospital or you talk to a nurse, they can ask you, the doctor can ask you, how old are you? You say, I am, so if somebody asks me, I would say I'm 60 years old. I'm a little bit older than that. Do you have a pet? Sometimes they ask you that when you go, especially to a doctor. Do you have a pet? Pet means a cat or a dog or a bird or something that you keep at home. So you could say what? No, I don't have a pet. Or yes, I do have a pet. That's not an issue. But how old are you? You don't ask these questions from somebody you meet for the first time, but when you go to a hospital or some other places, they can ask you that for their records to write it down. Okay, now, other things that they ask you, they ask you like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? Favorite means what? Something that you like very, very much. If there are four or five other things, you like one more than the other ones, that's what? Favorite, okay? So if you have, for example, brown and yellow and red and, and blue color and from the brown and red and yellow you like blue then you say what ah my favorite color is blue or blue is my favorite color so favorite color 
favorite food, favorite person, favorite city. So favorite, favorite book. So it's people ask you this when you talk to people. What's your favorite book? What's your favorite TV program? What's your favorite TV station? I hope it is Iman. Okay, so favorite. Okay, please repeat. Favorite. My favorite color is blue. Now, we are moving to the next part of this listen. The next part is listening to a conversation and then answering questions about it. So, there's a conversation between two people, Roya and Simin. I want you to listen and then you're going to answer questions about what you hear. I'm going to read this two times uh, 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 for you and then you answer questions about it, okay? So please listen carefully. So Roya starts the conversation. So she says, so do you usually go to the gym in the morning? Simin says what? Yeah, I do. Really? What time do you go to work? I work in the afternoon. I start my work at 5. Wow, that's late. When do you get home? I usually get home at midnight. Midnight? That's late. What do you do exactly? I'm a TV announcer. I do the weather report on Iman TV. Don't you recognize me? Oh, you are Simin Amiri. I love your show. By the way, I'm Roya Popal. Okay, so you could have a conversation like this. Let me read this again, and then later we will look at the form of the verb, and then what? How you use the subject, and what? How you use the present form of a verb. Let me read one more time and answer questions about it. So the conversation is between Roya and Simin. So, do you usually go to gym in the morning? Yeah, I do. Really? What time do you go to work? I work in the afternoon. I start my work at 5. Wow, that's late. When do you get home? I usually get home at midnight. Midnight? That's late. What do you do exactly? I'm a TV announcer. I do the weather report on Iman TV. Don't you recognize me? <coughs> oh, you are Simin Amiri. I love your show. By the way, I'm Roya Popal. So sometimes people make conversation like this and they introduce themselves at the end and then the other person will start asking questions. But let me see if you remember the answer for these questions. The questions are, you, you circle T for true and F for false statements. So if you think the information you heard is correct, you circle mark. T. If you think that information you heard is not correct on this statement, you circle F or false. The first one is, Roya doesn't ask questions from Simin. Is that correct? Who asks the questions? Number two, Simin usually goes to gym in the morning. Is this what Simin said? He goes to gym in the morning? Number three, Roya works in the afternoon. So in other words, we talked about two people, Roya and Simin. Who works in the afternoon? Which one? Roya or Simin? Simin usually gets home at midnight. Is that correct? Simin is a weather reporter on Iman TV. Is that correct? Simin asks a lot of questions. Is that correct? So now let me go to the next page and see if you get the correct answers. The first one was what? Roya doesn't ask questions from Simin. So that is what? false because we are asked a lot of questions from Simin. Simin usually goes to gym in the morning. Is that correct? The answer is yes. Royale works in the afternoon. Is that correct? No. Why? Because it's Simin who works. Roya hasn't even talked about herself. Simin usually gets home at midnight. How about that one? Correct. Simin is a weather reporter on Iman TV. And that is what? Also correct. And Simin asks uh, uh, 
actually ruya a lot of questions and that is also what false um, now let's read the dialogue together and pay attention to the base form of the verb and the subject So here is the dialogue. So, do you usually go to gym in the morning? See, do you usually go? So go is what? The verb. Yeah, I do. So formally, we say yes. Informally, we say what? Yeah. So sometimes you talk to people and instead of yes, they say what? Yeah. That means yes. Yeah. Really? What time do you go to work? Again, you talk about that you go to work every day, so you use what? Simple present tense. Go. Um, I work in the afternoon. I start my work at 5. See? She answers. Wow. That's late. When do you get home? So, wow, it shows that you're kind of surprised that somebody starts work at five. Most people work from what? Nine to five. But this person starts working at five o'clock. I usually get home at midnight. Midnight? That's late. What do you do exactly? So Roya is surprised that somebody gets back home at midnight. So that's why I say midnight? Question. That's late. What do you do exactly? I'm a TV announcer. I do the weather report on Iman TV. Don't you recognize me? Recognize is a new word for you. I didn't teach you this the past. So in the past, so recognize means to know somebody. If you if you see somebody on TV, you see him on the next time in a, in a meeting, and say, "Oh, that's that person." You recognize the face. You people that you have met before, your family members, your cousins, your coworkers, your classmates. You see them after some time, you recognize them. You know them. That's what recognize means. So please repeat after me. Recognize. Recognize. Oh, then this is just uh, Simin Amiri. I love your show. By the way, I'm Ruya Popal. So, I love your show. Usually you need to be positive. You don't want to you meet somebody. You don't want to start with negative things. So it's usually people want to say what? Something positive. I love your show. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the, the verb form, and you can see the subjects here that you usually go. And then the next subject is what? Yeah, I do. I do. I is the subject. And then uh, what time do you, you go? So that's why the verb agrees with the subject. And then we have what? I work, and then I start. I is the subject. And then that's late. So that is also what? A subject. And the verb is what? Is. And you shorten it. Say that's. Not that is. But that's. Okay? So that, that, that's the short form. And then the next subject is you again. And then I. And then that's late. So again, that becomes what? The subject. And then you. And then uh, I. I'm. So this means I am. So that's the subject there. And then I and then you, and then you again, and then I, and then I, and these are what? Subjects and subject verbs. So because of time, I have to stop here. So this is the end of our lesson six, and I want you to review lesson one through lesson number six, review the vocabulary, review the, the, the grammar. See, remember, I've so far taught you three things about the grammar. The simple present tense, with action verb and to be verb. I also taught you adverbs of frequency, words that are used for simple present tense, like always, usually, often, sometimes, uh, rarely, seldom, and never. And then today's lesson, which was what? On present progressive tense, that you have to use a form of B, is, M, R, plus verb, and then plus ing like I am talking now. So I want you to review all of that. And of course, a lot of words that I give you about the supermarket, about grocery stores, the different parts of grocery stores, 
and also words about occupations. So I want you to keep reviewing this and get yourself ready for the next lesson. بیننده های بسیار محترم تلویزیون ایمان درس امروز ما به امیجه و پایان رسید تا هفته آینده شما را به خداوند متعال نسوارم تشکرم